So extracurricular activities are a great way to grow and develop your skills and qualities as a pre-med. However, extracurricular activities can also help you stand out among other applicants, even if you do have slightly worse stats than them. Today I'll be talking about the five top extracurricular activities that you need as a pre-med to get into a good medical school. First, some important things to keep in mind on the US applications, at least for the AMCAS application, when applying to medical school, there are 15 slots for activities. Each of these slots can have up to four occurrences or four main events. And so you can potentially include a lot of different activities or opportunities. However, medical schools value depth over breadth, so it's much better to focus on quality rather than quantity and not try to just rack up as many extracurriculars as you can or have a checklist of different things that you're trying to get off that aren't really meaningful. Try to focus on activities that are meaningful and think about what each activity can bring to you before you start it. So, so before you begin an event or an activity, try to think if that activity will help develop or demonstrate that you have qualities like leadership, good communication, commitment, passion for medicine, altruism, consistency, and other valuable traits that a potential future doctor would have. Every pre-med is doing a basic science club and maybe a random volunteering activity, but how will you stand out among the other pre-meds? So next to the types of activities or extracurriculars, one thing before I start going to the different categories is that you can double or triple dip in different categories. So if uh, one activity, if you do one activity that covers one thing and another thing, they, it could count for both of those and you don't need different activities to meet each of these category requirements. So the first activity would be shadowing and shadowing is pretty much a given. Medical schools want to know that you know what you're getting yourself into so this could include things like contacting a doctor at a clinic and, and walking around with them throughout the day. These usually aren't very active, they're more of a passive observational role but they're still valuable in you learning how medicine really is instead of just hearing about it from other people or from shows or things Things like that. I would recommend that if you have an idea of what you want to get into, try to shadow that specialty. So if you're 100% sure that you want to do psychiatry and you hate surgery, don't shadow an orthopedic surgeon. It could be a valuable experience, but try to focus on things you're actually interested in. The second category is um, perhaps the most important, which is volunteering. So this shows your commitment to medicine, and this could include things like uh, non-clinical or clinical volunteering. So if you're really passionate about, let's say, saving the environment like one of my classmates, you could start like an environmental uh, sustainability club or a recycling club or something. However, if you don't have a particular non-clinical interest, I'd recommend trying to stick more to clinical uh, volunteering. So things like volunteering at an underserved clinic or even volunteering at a camp for like muscular dystrophy patients uh, could be uh, fall into this category. Personally, I volunteered at an underserved clinic and what this did was it allowed me to have a lot of active roles in the clinic. So I helped with vitals, with health education. I helped organize different specialty clinics like a dermatology clinic. I was part of a team that moved the clinic from paper charts to electronic medical records and helped with like the IT process of that. I helped with uh, various website updates and changes. So I think underserved clinics are one of the ways to have more of an active role in a clinical setting. So this would cover both the shadowing aspect and the volunteering aspect, which is why I highly recommend doing more clinical volunteering if possible. The next big category is research, and there's non-clinical and clinical research. Research is important because it shows that you're familiar with the scientific process, you know how to read papers and understand papers, which is very important since medicine is evidence-based nowadays and it's all based on the hard work of a lot of researchers putting in lots of time to make even the mi most minute discoveries that add up over time. So uh, you need to show that you understand where medicine comes from and you know how to read and analyze papers since as a doctor you will be constantly reading papers to stay up to date on all the newest information, evaluating studies um, and deciding if they'll be useful for your patients. So it's always important to stay on top of the literature and doing research shows that you appreciate that. Doing research is also a great way to show that you are really passionate about science and it allows you to convey how clinical medicine is more fitting for you than simply doing research since a lot of students come in uh, or apply to medical school with the basic story that they like medicine or they like helping people and they like science and researchers help people and they like science too so doing research allows you to differentiate yourself by explaining how doing medicine would be a better fit for you than doing research. So for research I highly recommend you one find a professor who's doing research that you actually like and you're interested in 
Two, finding a professor who does research that you're interested in in a field that you potentially want to go into. Like for example, if you're trying to do orthopedic surgery, maybe look for a professor that's doing research on like collagen or um, joint strength or things like that. It just makes it more relevant to your overall picture. It paints a better story. Um, it's more interesting to you, so you're probably gonna work harder and not get bored as much. And it may tie into your medical school um, research in the future. I'd highly recommend that you look through the professors in the area that you're trying to uh, find research for and look and see how many publications they put out and how often they put out publications. If you can find a researcher that puts out more publications than another, it increases the chances that you will get your name published on a paper or poster or presentation. And that actually helps a lot for medical school and even later on. So the next big category is personal hobbies and personal hobbies are important because it shows that you're a well-rounded person which would make for more well-rounded doctor who brings to the table different opinions and views than someone who just studies all day and it's also a lot more interesting. So definitely have some personal hobbies that you like to do. Um, one for your own sanity and well-being but also to be a more well-rounded uh, diverse individual who uh, brings more to the table as a future physician. This is where you can really stand out. I know people who have slightly worse grades that get into more uh, medical schools or get more interviews or secondaries because they are more of a well-rounded person as opposed to someone who just does school all the time and doesn't have more of a multi-dimensional personality. With personal hobbies, whatever you're doing, I'd recommend, and with, even with all the other activities, I'd recommend trying to stand out in a way. So nowadays everyone is like a Instagram travel or food photographer or whatever. Uh, but if you can maybe start a travel blog if you're into travel photography or you have a high level travel photos or videos or maybe you have your own side uh, portrait business that you do. These things show that you take your hobby to the next level, that you stand out among the rest of your peers and that you are committed to your passions and whatever hobbies they may be. It's good to have a creative side or um, other aspects of your personality. Again, with uh, personal hobbies as with other categories, you can double or triple dip. So let's say you like music Music, like one of my classmates, uh, what she did is uh, she's interested in hospice and palliative care medicine and she likes working with elderly patients so she volunteered at a hospice center and she really liked music and singing so she'd uh, play music and sing for hospice patients so that way she's able to uh, engage in her hobby, take it to the next level and also do clinical volunteering at the same time. Similarly, if you really like uh, coding, maybe you could start an after school coding camp in underserved areas to help students have uh, more productive activities after school. You could, if you really like soccer, um, you could take that to the next level by maybe starting a soccer club, joining intramural soccer, maybe being the, a team captain. Maybe you start a soccer club in an underserved area where uh, kids can come after school for uh, productive activity and exercise. You could found and become president of a soccer club on campus. You can coach soccer and other things like that that overall take your hobby to the next level and also maybe dip into different categories of extracurriculars that cover different areas, show that you're multidimensional and also show different qualities that you have like leadership, like commitment, like uh, altruism and other things. Having hobbies and taking them to the next level and using that as a base point to cover other categories of extracurriculars is also a nice way to not just uh, stay excited and motivated but you have fun while you're doing all these other things and it's more of an organic way to do extracurriculars that also benefits you in your medical school application. So the next big topic is teaching slash work. If you need to work because you need to pay off your college fees or tuition or you just want to work for extra spending money, I'd re highly recommend you do more of a medical related job. So things like EMT or scribing are more clinical related so you cover clinical shadowing aspect as well and you're having more of an active role so it's even better than chat simply just shadowing so you're able to earn money but also cover your medical school shadowing requirement you're also learning valuable skills like a lot of ENTs come in or uh, scribes come in with an idea of how to diagnose different things a little bit better than an average med student who hasn't had any uh, deep clinical experience before. I think teaching is a great non-clinical form of work. It's still valuable and it could even be its own category. Teaching is great because you are uh, mentoring other students, you are breaking down complex science topics to uh, people that have a harder time understanding the concept for example and uh, complex science, math or whatever other so topic it could be and teaching them in a way that's easier for them to understand. This is something that doctors do every day so uh, it shows that you can uh, teach other people, complex topics, maybe in science or math ideally, 
it also shows that you're a leader in a sense and you have a mentoring or nurturing personality. So next, a sixth or bonus category would be things like clubs and clubs kind of fall into some of the other categories as well. If you're doing a science or medical related club, it would show your passion for science and medicine, which research or shadowing would show if you're into volunteering and do a volunteer club, it would show volunteering and altruism again. If you're doing a sports club it would, or like a dance club or something, it would show uh, your commitment to a hobby. However, again, whatever you do, make sure you take that to the next level. So um, for a club, for example, like uh, if I was part of the Molecular and Cellular Biology Club, I ended up becoming like treasurer and then uh, vice president and president. And as a president, I was able to do things like promote community outreach with community outreach events to help high schoolers and middle schoolers learn more about careers in science. I was able to organize like a weekly journal club and weekly lectures by professors, which shows uh, leadership qualities and also a passion for science and I was able to organize things like various volunteering events throughout, throughout the community which shows things like altruism and again leadership so again whatever you do uh, whatever club you're doing try to make it meaningful and not just go to a bunch of clubs just because you want things to add to your application try to make sure that it relates to your overall picture and take things to the next level maybe double or triple dip in other categories as well so shadowing volunteering research personal hobbies, teaching slash work, and maybe clubs are the five slash six-ish different extracurricular activities that I highly recommend you do. You don't have to, again, try to do like 60 different activities to fill out every single possible slot in your AMCA's application for medical school, but covering each of these five main categories is highly recommended and beneficial, at least doing it in some regard. Again, remember that all these have to be balanced with your grades, so make sure number one is always gonna be your grades and your MCAT, but but after that, make sure you have plenty of meaningful activities in each of these five different categories and you should be good. So I hope some of that was beneficial to you guys. Let me know down below in the comment section if uh, some of this was useful or you have any other extracurricular that I didn't cover. Let me know any types of videos that you'd like me to make next. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bar, and have a good rest of your day. Good luck. Take care. So cool thing that happened today is I just interviewed a uh, ophthalmologist, a pediatric ophthalmologist who actually did my the type of surgery, eye surgery that I had when I was a kid and um, did some other techniques as well that I had um, done to me when I was a kid. So that was kind of cool to talk to someone who was specialized in a very particular field that I had experience with.